Welcome back. Now we're going to shift to judgment decision making. We're going to start by judging probabilities. Basically, what are the odds that the LA Lakers are going to win the NBA championship this year? Well, anytime somebody judges probability, the answer is somewhere between zero and one, or you could say zero and a hundred percent, but the technical way of talking about it is between zero and one. If something has a probability of 0.5, it means 50-50. Equal chance that it happens, equal chance that it doesn't happen. Um, if a probability, if something has a probability of one, then it's a certainty that it will happen. If something has a probability of zero, that's also a certainty, but it's a certainty that the event or the thing you're talking about won't happen. All right, why is that important? Well, I'm going to talk to you about these quick and dirty rules that we use to judge probabilities. And I don't mean that in a mathematical sense. I mean it in, a, in an everyday sort of sense. Like imagine you um, are walking down the street and one of these two people, actually it's the same person in two different outfits, but uh, one of them is walking towards you. And the question in your back of your mind is, what is the probability that this person is trustworthy? Should I trust this person? Um, we know quite a bit about how people make those judgments on the fly, that is using their gut instinct to drive their decision. And sort of the gut instinct that we use to make judgments about all sorts of things, but adjustments about of this type it's called the anchoring heuristic, or sometimes it's called the anchoring and adjustment heuristic, but for me, it's the anchoring heuristic. And the idea is simple. It's probably what you have been told ever since you were a little kid. First impressions matter, right? Anytime somebody's going to a job interview, the, you know, they get the new haircut, they make sure they look great, the clothes are all there, they think about what kind of bag to carry because those first impressions matter and they matter a lot. And that's not an old wives tale, that's science. Um, and that's what the anchoring heuristic is all about. It says your first impression matters, not just in judging people, but in judging the value of a bottle of wine or the solution to a mathematical equation. That first impression matters. And then once you, if you can think of that first impression as literally an anchor, you know that it's hard to move an anchor. You can move it, but it requires a great deal of force. So the anchoring heuristic says you use your first impression and then you adjust from there, but the adjustment is hard to do. So that anchor has a lot of weight. So how do we know this? Well, let me tell you about a study that's depicted here in cartoons on the right. You get a group of people to do something very simple. You say, what's the last two digits of your social security number? Now that number is completely random, but it's gonna be somewhere between zero and 99. So maybe you've got one person who says the last two numbers of the social security number is 11 and somebody else who says it's 99. Now you know, these are just numbers, they have nothing to do with anything. Okay, then you put a bottle of wine in front of each of those people and you say, how much do you think that bottle of wine is worth? Now you wouldn't expect the last two numbers of their social security number to anchor or influence or impact their judgment of the value of wine, but it does. The person who said that their social security number was 99 will tell you that that bottle of wine is worth more money than the person who told you their social security number was 11, right? So you see down here, the little guy in green had a lower social security number and he gave a lower value uh, as an estimate to the worth of a bottle of wine. And the fellow who um, gave the higher number gave a higher value to the a bottle of wine. Now, sometimes when people are trying to sell you things, they'll say something that might not make a whole lot of sense, which is, you might think this set of knives is worth $100. They're using anchoring. Okay, but you see anchoring all over the place. Um, when I go uh, clothes shopping, um, 
a lot of times I like to, Macy's is one store, but all sorts of stores do this. They'll put the original price of the item on the um, uh, price tag, and then they'll cross it out, but cross it out in a way that you can still see and put the new price below it, right? Why? Why don't they just put the old, the new price on top of the old price? Because that old price is the first thing that you see and it anchors you. So the sales price looks better if you see the original price. So for example, I, I, you know, I go to the mall and I need a pair of, I don't know, sheets for the bed. If I see something that's marked down from $200, now you can get the sheets for 200. I think, holy smokes, I need those sheets, give me three. Reality is the sheets are probably worth 15 bucks, but to me, they seem like a great deal. Amazon, next time you do some shopping at Amazon, notice something. They always list two prices, or almost always list two prices. The first one is its small number and it's crossed out. That's supposed to be the cost of the item, I guess, at other places. And then there's the Amazon price, which is larger and in, in red font. Well, why do they add a price and then cross it out? Anchoring, because it makes that 2338 uh, price look really, really good. So anchoring, anchoring is occurs, said to occur, when the first number you encounter influences your later estimates or anything else involving that number, or anything else involving numbers. Forget about that number. Okay. I'm gonna try to give you a demonstration of what happens uh, when people take this class with a group of other people. And I give folks a demonstration of the anchoring effect that goes like this. I have half of the room see this equation. So half the students see one times two times three times four times five. And I show it very quickly and I ask them, just look at this and give me your best guess as to what the solution is. Do not work it out. Just your gut. What's your gut instinct tell you is a solution? And then I have those students close their eyes and I have the other side of the class look up and they see the same equation but flipped backwards. So now instead of being one times two times three, now it's eight times seven times five, six times five times four. And I give them the same instructions. Just look at that equation. Give me your gut instinct as to what the right answer is. Now, you and I know that it's the same equation, so the answer should be the same no matter whether it's presented with numbers increasing or numbers decreasing. But it turns out it makes a big difference. So students who, and subjects and experiments, who are given the first equation, one times two times three times four, etc., their gut instinct on average is that the solution to that equation is 512. That's the average number. The other half of the students who get the equation eight times seven times six times five, their average answer is 2,250. So the difference between 500 and 2,250 is pretty dramatic. And what does it mean? It reflects this heuristic, this anchoring heuristic. When the first numbers that you see are small, one times two times three, these are puny numbers, so it can't be a big answer, right, in our heads. Or if the equation, same equation, but the first numbers I encounter are larger, eight times seven times six, then I think, oh, it's a bigger number, right? So that's an example of anchoring. It's also true that in reality, we're terrible at math because the real answer to this equation, whether no matter which orientation it's given in, is 40,320. And as you can see, the average answers are never anywhere near this. But the difference between 500 and 2,250, that's the anchoring effect. And this was developed by these two gentlemen, Amos Traversky and Danny Kahneman. Amos and uh, Danny um, worked together um, for decades and had a super productive collaboration. Um, their work eventually earned them the Nobel Prize in Economics. There is no Nobel Prize in Psychology. 
Um, so it was Warden Economics. And in fact, that makes sense because there's a new field within economics that results directly from their work, and that's called behavioral economics. Um, funny side note, it turns out that you cannot be awarded a Nobel Prize posthumously, that is after you're dead. So when it came time to get the Nobel Prize, only Danny was awarded the Nobel Prize, but he took Amos's family to the ceremony and dedicated it to Amos. Okay, so what is this rule, this gut instinct, this first impression matters kind of theme? Well, these are these simple rules called heuristics that we use to make quick and dirty decisions. So judging under probability is judging the likelihood of anything. The likelihood that the Lakers will win the NBA championship this year, the likelihood that it will rain tomorrow, the likelihood that in the next election, um, the current president will be voted out of office and a new president will be voted into office. All of those are judgments of probabilities. And the quick and dirty rules that we use to answer those questions, if we're in a hurry, are called heuristics. That's what a heuristic is, sort of a mental shortcut or using your gut to make a decision. And the thing is that oftentimes heuristics work really, really well. That's why we use them. But um, to prove that they exist, um, Kahneman and Tversky came up with a, a number of experiments to find those special conditions in which we don't reason accurately, that the heuristics don't work, that they fall apart. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example here of a classic Kahneman and Tversky sort of question, but I'm not gonna give you the answer uh, until the next lecture. And in fact, there really isn't a right answer in many respects. So just give me your gut instinct to an answer to this question. You meet a man who is slim, short, wears glasses, and likes poetry. What is his most likely profession? Is this gentleman a university professor or is he a truck driver? So take your best guess, just gut instinct. And I wanna show you one more slide before we go to the next lecture. And that is um, an idea that comes out of a very influential book that Danny Kahneman wrote called Thinking Fast and Slow, in which he proposes that we have two different cognitive systems that we can use to make uh, judgments and decisions. We have this fast system where we rely on unconscious instincts, our gut, um, it's, it, this system is largely unconscious. We're not, you didn't know that you used an anchoring heuristic to make decisions about whether or not to buy something, but in fact you do. So this is an unconscious process. The fast thinking system is influenced a lot by our emotions and associations. It's a quick and dirty system. Now we're also quite capable of making decisions using the slow thinking system, which is we can make deliberate and logical and effortful choices. If you wanna find out what the odds are that it's gonna to rain tomorrow, you might you know, go online and find out what are the odds that um, it rains in Los Angeles on October 7th every year, okay? Um, it would be like a Spock sort of answer. So you can find the precise answer or you can give a quick and dirty um, guess, guesstimate, if you will. And that's the difference between the slow and the fast system. Okay, come right back. We'll talk all about heuristics.